Hi friends, my name is Miss Ashley and I am an art instructor here at Studio 23 and I'm going to be working with you over the next couple of weeks while we work on our Michigan nature art pieces. Okay, and today we're going to work on um, one of Michigan's state trees. It's the white pine and we're going to make a really cool picture together. It's going to be really easy and it's going to be really fun and you guys get to have a little bit of creativity and what you want to make your tree look like. We're not going to make it look too much like a real tree. We're going to do some folk art and we're going to learn how to use our watercolors and our crayons together. Okay, so each and every single one of you should have a brand new pack of watercolors. Okay, watercolors work a little bit differently than a normal paint. So when you're working with watercolors, I want you to think water, color, water, color. So every time that you're going to dip your paintbrush into the watercolors, you gotta make sure that you dip it in the water and then the color. Water, then color, okay? We're never going to smush our paintbrushes into the watercolor. We're never gonna make the watercolor gooey. We're always gonna make sure that there's a big old puddle right on top of our color, okay? It's gonna stay wet. It's gonna be like painting with a puddle, all right? And when we're using our paint brushes, we wanna make sure that we're being very, very gentle, okay? We're not gonna push on our water, um, into the watercolor, and we're not gonna push into the paper. So you look at our brush right here, and we don't want to smush him, not at all, that hurts. So we wanna make sure that we're always very, very gently lightly petting, like say you're petting a kitty cat. We're always going to lightly pet when we're dipping it into the water or when we're putting the paint onto the paper, okay? Very gentle. And you've got a pack of crayons. I'm sure you've all worked with crayons before. And I'm sure you all know that crayons are pretty fragile. And if you squish or you push a little too hard, they might break in half. But you know what? A broken crayon still colors just the same. So if you happen to push just a little too hard or squeeze just a little too hard and your crayon cracks, it's okay. Just break off the end, put it back in your box so you don't lose it, and you can use the other end to finish your project. Now, you're all gonna have a big old piece of paper just like this, okay? And it's very important that when we're drawing this picture, we're drawing it big, okay? We're gonna do big and we're gonna make sure it fits on our paper. That's really important when we're working with art because you don't want a teeny tiny tree down here in the corner. Well, that's just not gonna be big enough. It's not gonna be able to see it from far away. So we want it bold and bright and big, okay? So we're gonna start off and we're gonna learn a little bit about a white pine. So the cool thing about a white pine is if you think of a Christmas tree, Christmas tree, bright green, isn't it? Right, well, the white pine in Michigan is bluish green, and it has long, skinny pine needles that are nice and soft. So if you put your hand on a regular conifer or pine tree, it's kind of spiky and it hurts your hands. But the cool thing about our white pines is they're soft and sweet, okay? So our white pines today are gonna be blue and green to make a blue-green, okay? other cool things about the white pine is that they can grow to be really big, really, really big, really fast. So we got to make sure that our tree on our paper is pretty big, right? Okay, so we're going to start off and we're going to use either a dark blue or a purple crayon to draw this part, okay? So try, the thing about pine trees is that they're really small on top and then they get bigger as they go down, just like a triangle. So I'm going to make mine out of three triangles. We're gonna make a small one, a little bit bigger, and a little bit bigger. So we're gonna start kind of at the top of our page. And I've got one triangle. Okay, and instead of adding this tippy top on my next triangle, I'm just gonna make my other triangle come out of the bottom of that one, okay? And then we're gonna do a third one. And we're gonna make sure it's extra wide and it goes almost to the edge of the paper. And we're gonna make sure that our tree takes up most of the space on our paper, okay? And then of course, the most important part of the pine tree is going to be that stump right there. 
because the reason that the white pine is a Michigan state tree is because Michigan is known for its lumbering in our history. Okay, so way back in the day, we had so many trees, so, 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 so many trees. We still have lots of trees in Michigan. I'm sure you've seen them. And lumberjacks lived here. And lumberjacks would cut down the trees and they would use the wood to build furniture and cabinets and houses. And the white pine has really pretty white wood on the inside. And so we're gonna make sure we've got our three triangles and a little stump because the stump is the most important part of the Michigan state tree. Okay. And now, if you would like to, you can pause this video and let all of our friends catch up to make sure that all of our triangles are nice and big and we're filling up our page. So go ahead and do a pause. Okay, now that you're done drawing all of your triangles, we're going to add a little bit of whimsy to our painting, okay? So this is what's gonna make it more of a folk art piece than a realism piece, because we're not gonna draw every single tiny little boop, 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 pine needle on our pine tree, okay? That would take forever. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna add some whimsy and some little designs. So what I want you to do is all along the bottom of our triangles, I want you to make little lines, just little lines all the way across on all three of our triangles. Great. Now we're going to add some even more whimsy. Even though our pine trees don't have circles on them, they do have pine cones, right? So we're going to just kind of make some little pine cones up here. <clears throat> All right, see, you push too hard with these crayons and everything starts to go a little wonky. Some circles in our pine tree. You don't want to do the circles all over the place because then they're just going to look like Christmas ornaments, right? So we're not making a Christmas tree. We are making a white pine. So I've got all my circles, all of my lines, and now I'm going to go and I'm going to take the other color. So if you used blue, you're going to get the purple. And if you used purple, you're going to get the dark blue for the next step. We're still adding some of our whimsy to our painting. And all of those circles that you made, you're gonna take your next color and you're gonna make a little bit bigger circle around it or a little circle inside of it. And you can do it any which way you want. So I'm gonna do inside and, and then outside, and then inside and then outside. Just so I have a little pattern on my tree. Okay, just like that. Get your whimsy and make sure that your tree is silly and fun and that I, you can pause it again and I'll wait for you to catch up. Great, now we have to do something with the background. And we're going to grab our yellow crayon. So we're going to make stars. We're gonna make silly stars. We're not gonna draw a star, do, 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 no. Cause not everybody knows how to draw that shape yet, but everybody should know how to do a circle. So just like we did these circles here, we're going to make circles all around our tree, everywhere on our background. And I want lots of circles, lots and lots and lots of circles, small circles, big circles, squiggly circles, right? So I started and I got all of my circles. You might not be able to see them, but I'm sure that you're going to be able to do them just fine. Think stars, think, think scattered. And then I'm gonna make bigger circles around them so they kind of match my whimsical little pine cones. Bigger circles all the way around them. All over the background, okay? Now, it's gonna look a little bit like magic to you. When I add my watercolor to it, you're definitely gonna be able to see all my stars then. So. Just like I said before, it's water color, water color. We're gonna dip our paintbrushes in and we're going to bring the water to the color and you're gonna fill up that whole dark blue on the top 
of your watercolor palette, okay? So this one right here, you're gonna fill it all the way up so it's a nice drippy puddle. See how it's drippy and not gooey. Okay, and then you're gonna take your watercolor and you're going to take the puddle and you're gonna go around the edge of your, your tree just a little bit, dip, and a little bit more. And once you have a line like that, you're gonna dip it and you're just going to add more water. More water, not more color. More water and start spreading it all around outside of your tree. And you're gonna notice something really cool about your paint and your bright yellow crayon. As soon as you start trying to paint on that crayon, the watercolor is not gonna stick. It's gonna resist the crayon because the crayon is made of wax and wax and water are not friends. So you're just going to keep on painting and painting and painting your background. Make sure that you're using lots and lots of water so that it's not all dark and goopy. You want it to be soft and you're going to use lots of water just to keep spreading it all around. If it gets too dark somewhere, just add more water. Keep spreading it all the way around and underneath your tree because the whole entire background is going to be this awesome blue color. Now mine's going to get just a little bit drippy because I have to have it sitting up for you to see it, right? When I have it sitting up and I'm adding all this water, of course it's gonna drip. Now, I'm gonna pause the video here. You're welcome to pause it too. And I'm gonna finish up my background while all of you finish up yours. Okay. Great. Your backgrounds should look just like this with that awesome bright yellow popping through the blue that we used. I now want blue all the way to the edges, all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom, all the way around our tree. Okay, and now we should be ready to start adding color to our tree. And if you remember, I told you that our white pines are going to be blue, green. So we're going to mix our blue and our green. So we are going to take our paintbrushes. And remember, we're not smashing, we're not mashing. We're just gently, gently painting. But we're going to take our brushes with no paint on them, no paint at all. We're just going to use our water and we're going to make our trees all wet. Everywhere inside of our triangles, we are just going to spread our invisible paint, our water, all over. Make sure you get it nice and wet. Because we're going to do something called a wash technique. And we're going to add our paint to the water on the paper. Make sure that our trees are nice and wet. Water those trees so they can grow big and strong. Okay, now that my tree is nice and wet, I'm going to go back to my paint palette and I'm going to try to keep this as neat and tidy as I can because if I mix up my colors, it's not going to look as good on my paper. So I'm gonna make sure that I get my bright green all wet and full of a puddle. My bright green all puddled. And then I'm going to take the light blue on the bottom row in between the yellow and the pink and we're going to get that one all wet too. So the bright green and the light blue need puddled and lots of water. Water and then color, water, and then color. Okay, and now that my paints are both super wet and ready to go, and my tree is super wet and ready to go, I'm going to take my bright green color first, and I am going to paint half of my tree green. This half is going to be green, and you should see the paint swirling and swishing into the water that you've already put on the page. Okay, and you're gonna use your brush and you're just gonna spread it around a little bit 
It doesn't have to stay dark green. It's going to get lighter the more it mixes in with the water, okay? And you're just going to swirl the green into the water, and you're going to make sure that half of your tree is green. Think of my drips. half of our tree is going to be green and you're just going to paint that brush back and forth back and forth to spread it out you can add more water if your tree dried a little bit while you were waiting for everyone to catch up you can add more water and we're just going to make sure that half of our tree is bright green bright green soft strokes And it's just fine if you want to take a little bit more paint in different places and make it darker. You can use brush strokes, so you can do lines to make it look like pine needles, or you can spread it out nice and even. That's all up to you. I'm gonna add just a little bit of dark green underneath and at the top of all of my triangles so that it looks like they're shaded just a little bit. Then, once you all have half of a green tree, we're going to go back in and we're going to go rinse our brushes really, really well so there's no more green in them. And you're going to go back into that light, light blue in between the yellow and pink, all puddled up, and you're going to paint the other half of the tree blue. And we're going to dip in the water, reload our brushes up with a big old puddle every time we need to. Just make sure that the blue and the green start to touch each other in the middle. You can add more water and they'll start to mix together just a little bit. How cool. And you can do a little bit of swirls back and forth. You can pull the green into the blue and the blue into the green. Anytime that you think your tree is getting a little too dry and the water is not and the paint's not spreading well enough. Just make sure you add a little bit more right out of your water cup. We want to make sure that all of our tree is painted blue and green. Our Michigan white pine. Our whimsical Michigan white pine. you've added all of your blue and all of your green and you're just going to take the water and you're going to go right in the middle and make sure that you're blending those colors into each other. Bring some of the green over to the blue and some of the blue over to the green. You could even add little puddles of blue into the green side or you can add puddles of green over on the blue side and you can add more water to help them blend and swirl and mix with each other. So we've got our blue and our green trees. Light blue and bright green. Okay. And you're even going to take just a little bit more of the dark blue that we used for the background and you're just gonna fill in that stump at the bottom. And the color that you colored it should poke right through just like our stars, okay? And there you go. We just painted a very whimsical and very fun Michigan white pine. And that is our first in our Michigan Nature Series. And we're going to learn a lot more together. And then we're going to see each other again next week with another video where we will be painting a robin, our state bird. And I'll have lots of fun facts for you about the robin. Thank you so much for making a painting with me. And I am so excited to see some pictures of what you guys made today. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.